Now that we've covered step rotation, we're ready to actually progress into doing a movement B-space. In this case, we're going to use a template like before. If I were to open this up, we would see that it's completely blank in this case. And that's because we're actually going to do the dimensions and the examples, and then we'll also do the annotations through the blends. I'm going to go ahead and close that, and we're going to boot up the B-space move project file. So I have the character tool in place. You can just dock it if you don't already have that. I'm going to close the blend space preview. I don't need that. And I'm going to find my character third person. It's going to be a little dark. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open an example level so I can get some solid lighting. And then I'm going to come to animations, B space, and I'm going to find my move template like I had before. So over on the right here, it says that I need at least one dimension for a B space. So we're going to add two of them, actually. The first one's going to be move speed, and the second one is going to be the travel angle, because we call these in our movement code for mannequin. The next thing that I want to do is I want to start adding examples. And when you add an example, you have to think about the lowest value of number for movement, which would be back in this case. And then also we work in a counterclockwise direction. So since we're doing a basic movement set, we'll do backward, and then we'll go to the right, forward, left. And then we want to do it on the inverse round, where we can actually loop around and wrap around the blend space. It's hard to understand, so I'm just going to start adding examples. And then we'll see once we have the blend space set up in the preview and how it blends together. I'm going to do add, and the first one I'm going to grab is going to be the backward. So already I've got my backward animation file set up and I need to add another example. So in this case I'm going to grab the aim right and this is basically strafing. It's going to continue to do that. Let's go ahead and pause that. I'm going to add one more and then it's going to be the forward. You can kind of see a pattern going on here. I'm going to keep adding them until I go all the way around twice. So now we have left. I want to go in and I want to add a backward again. Because we need to go in the other direction. Like before, let me scroll this out. We're able to go in and we have the backward and we want to do add. And we do aim right. And then we'll do add forward. And we'll do one more. And that's going to be aim left. So with all these in place, I can see that I have seven. So I need to have seven cells in each. So I'm going to go ahead and make my cell count 7 and, and 7. And then inside of my movement speed, I know that I want 0. And I'll make some arbitrary number like 5 be the max. And then inside of my rotation or the travel angle, I'm going to make minus 3.14 the min. And the maximum is going to be 1.57. I'm going to keep all the playback scales at 1. You can fold this up. We don't even need to see the dimensions anymore. And then let's go ahead and open the blend space a little bit. So we can kind of see exactly what we're doing here, except the grid seems to be off a little bit. I need to make sure this grid starts at 0. And then on the 5, I need to have my animations, which are duplicated right here, upward. So we can go ahead and close the blend space preview. And inside of this, we can make sure that our values, at least in this case, are customized. This way I can have everything on a nicely defined grid.
You don't always have to do this. You can be a little bit less exact, but it gives for a better blending on a beginner level. So now you'll see, if I pull this out, inside of this, we now have blends all the way across. So I need to start blending things together. And what I'm going to do for this is I'm going to actually type in Notepad++. Or we can use Notepad. That's OK. And I can see in my blends, if I count what it is, I need to do 0, 4, 5, 1. And then I have another one that is 1, 5, 6, 2. And then the last one that I would do would be 2, 6, 7, 3. So these are the numbers of the annotations that I'm going to actually put in. I just like to keep it handy because I'm going to start typing them in and I don't want to look back and forth. So in these annotations, I'm going to add three of them. And then inside of those, I'm going to add four slots. Let's go ahead and do them all. And then referencing those numbers, I can do 0, and then it will be 4, and it will be 5, and 1. And then the next one would be 1, 5, 6, 2. And then the last one will be 2, 6, 7, 3. This is why I write them down. It's a little easier to remember. Go ahead and press play. And then we'll come down to our scene parameters. And if I change the travel speed, see if it picks up. Travel angle changes. So we can go ahead and bring up the blend space preview and see how things are changing in real time. So currently, since we have three annotations, that is a polygon in many ways. It's blending between these four animations to create the change in the actual behavior. So right here, we can see that we are actually blending between these three. If I were to change, now it's blending between these three, or three or four. If I were to move it back, then we have backwards again. So you can see how this changes the direction simply based on blending on this grid. And the reason we kept doing it in this specific grid pattern is because I wanted you to be able to understand how the grid works when you can force exact animations. So moving on, we'll go on into Mannequin and look at exactly how the movement code works, and then also set up some fragments, and then we'll drop into the game eventually in the next couple tutorials to see how exactly we go from having a character with nothing to a full character moving in the Game Zero templates from scratch.